Hello and welcome brewers and lab nerds. Today I'm going to show you how to streak an agar plate with uh, yeast. So what you'll need is some sort of yeast sample. Uh, in this case I'm going to use a Hefeweizen yeast that I have uh, from in the bottom of a starter. You also need a loop that we're going to use to collect the yeast. I like to have it sitting in uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So I just took a test tube and pour some in the bottom there. You will also need isopropyl alcohol or another cleaner to thoroughly clean off your surface. Then you will need a Bunsen burner or some kind of alcohol burner. Something to ignite it with. You'll obviously need the agar plates. If you've uh, seen the previous videos you'll rec recognize these from there. So uh, go back if you have not to s learn how to make agar plates. And then you need a, a pen so you can write down on the back what it is that you are streaking. In this case I'm going to streak a Hefeweizen. So I'm going to go ahead and write down uh, the type of yeast. So Hef and the date I think it's the 22nd of August. I can double check that later. And then I initial it, just so we know who it is who's done it. All right, we're gonna leave it upside down until we're ready. What we're gonna be doing here is we are gonna streak in a specific pattern, and the pattern uh, is from quadrant one here. We're gonna collect some yeast using the loop. And we're going to put it on here and streak it back and forth like that. Then we're going to take the loop into the burner and uh, burn off whatever yeast is there. And turn this 90 degrees and go in through the previous yeast and at least twice. And then streak back and forth inside of quadrant number two. Then we'll re-burn our loop again. Turn the plate 90 degrees, do the same thing, streak through at least twice from the old yeast. And what we're doing is we're gradually thinning out the cells. So hopefully we'll end up with individual cells. And then we'll rotate one last time, go through twice, and then streak it here. All right, that's what we're gonna do. What I can do just to make it a little easier to see is actually mark it on the back of a different one here. That same pattern. So you will see what we are doing. But you normally don't mark that. Okay. Go ahead and light our Bunsen burner. All right. So if you had a sample of yeast in a tube like this, the aseptic method for doing this is you grab it and then using your pinky finger, you hold on here. Then you go ahead, actually let me hold on to that as well, the loop. Then you unscrew it, you flame the opening, grab the sample that you want, take it out, hold it next to the flame but not so close that you uh, destroy your sample, then reflame and connect in again. We're going to be using this sample, so um, we'll be doing it slightly differently. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just, since the yeast is now on the bottom here, I'm going to stir it up just to get it into solution. There we go. We'll bring it in nice and close. We'll turn this plate the other way around. And we're going to lift the lid, but try to keep it as close to um, uh, close to being on as possible. All right. So the first thing we do is to burn the loop. So now we're killing off anything that's on there. Now if you go into collect yeast off of another plate, you got to be careful because you don't want to kill the yeast by touching it with a hot loop. 
so you would let it cool first. We're going to go into a liquid so it does not come into factor as much. We'll stick it in there. Get a small sample. Then we'll start in quadrant one. We'll go back and forth, back and forth in quadrant one. Then we will reburn our loop. That takes care of getting rid of any excess yeast that's there. And we'll turn it 90 degrees. So from here we're going to go in, grab at least once, twi or at least twice I mean, back and forth. And then go ahead and burn our loop again. I drew it actually a little incorrectly here. So we'll go out and back, streak there. And one last time. Let it cool off. The way you can test that it is cooled off also is just attach the edge of your gel. If it doesn't hiss, then it's ready to go. Once, twice, back and forth. And there you go. Now last thing you do is you take your, your plates and you put it upside down. You always want to have the gel on top when you're storing it. And you put it into your incubation chamber at 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius for about two to three days until you see colony growth. And at that point, you can go ahead and wrap the outside with electrical tape and uh, put it in the fridge and keep it there for up to six months. And um, when six months comes up, if you want to keep redoing it, then you would go back, grab a few samples from the, um, the existing plates with your loop and put it in some liquid, stir it up and start over again. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.